Okay, so all of the E3's 2017 showings are done. We've seen them all. There's been some stuff announced after, but I don't really care about that. Now, we're going to see the good shit, some of the bad, and some of the insanely hilarious things that happened over E3 2017. And we're basically going to do a post-mortem of each one of the press conferences. Anyways, on to the video. I'm... Bu um... <laughs> yeah, it's great. I went early, Rog. I went early. Ladies and gentlemen, we are the men in blazers. That's Rog, the bald one. I'm Davo, way less bald in person. We are delighted to be here. I like sports games sometimes, but fuck me, that's almost all this was. The wall. It's our armor. It protects us from what lies beyond. Well, uh, I'll, I'll touch on it more when I get to the Xbox showing, but uh, it was just an okay trailer. Yeah, wait for me, okay? This looked like a hell of a lot of fun, but that's really it. Over the moon, we finally have a date for Cuphead. September 29th cannot come soon enough. In fact, it's only just begun. That's why we brought in you. You got the talent. Now you need the tech. Three things to fall. Today, you throw grenades. Boom. Tomorrow, you'll be throwing cards. And speaking of dates, November 7th is when the third game of the fantastic Crackdown series will be out. I'm hyped for it. I'm probably going to buy it with the Scorpio or the X. Sorry, I meant to... Ah, well, who cares? I'm leaving that in. Orient of Blind Forest was fantastic, and the fact that they even announced a sequel was not something I expected. But it was acclaimed, it was well loved, and Ori 2 looks amazing. What would you do? If the world you knew was gone. Save Decay 2. The, uh, the first one was an XBLA game that cost like 15, maybe 20 bucks. It's getting a whole hog sequel. And it looks like it's going to be the steps towards the long rumored uh, Class 4 MMO, which is what Undead Loves has talked about for, uh, for years. And I'm excited. Uh, Save K2, I think, does it say it comes out later this year or early 2018? I think 2018. And it, uh, it cannot come soon enough in my book. So, yeah. Oh, 
Metro Exodus. 2033 and Last Light were some of the best shooters of last generation, so um, there's no way we can really fuck this up. I'm excited. Fittingly named Xbox One X. <laughs> Xbox One X, the most powerful console ever made. Well, I called the uh, price point exactly to a T. Um... If it being smaller than the Xbox One S and the power that it has, the One X has a good, solid market. I think. I think it's got a market for it. Who knows? <laughs> Crimson Sky. And it looks great. And like the Xbox 360 games, OG games will look better and play better across the Xbox One family. We'll have more to share about this program when it launches later this year. Original Xbox backwards compatibility. Man, I, I fucking called that one. The only one that's been talked about was Crimson Skies, but that, it's one of the biggest jabs so far this year at its own. Okay, I wanted to amend something here at the end. Uh, they announced Fusion Frenzy is going to be backwards compatible. That was one of the uh, one of the ones they announced. Apparently, they showed footage, but uh, I'm kind of late in editing this when I finally saw that tweet. So there's a link to the uh, the show where apparently they showed footage. I don't know if they actually showed it. Um, yeah. The world of Anthem is hostile, and threats can come from any direction. Dynamic world where the unexpected is around every corner. Yeah, he seems like a problem for another day. Alright, um, so Anthem, yeah. Um, it, it, it's okay. It doesn't look anything bad, it doesn't look anything... The trailer was very indicative of what the game had. And that's worrying. Oh hey, life is strange before the storm. I'm not gonna show too much footage, apparently with DMC people that have this footage, so um... I'm not gonna take the risk. Here, here's, here's an image. Right there. Alright, and just to wrap this up, a... Just quick smattering of some games that I thought were intriguing, but I didn't want to put on the plus, so. Creation Club, a collection of new game content for Skyrim and Fallout 4, including new weapons, new armor, new outfits and accessories, new crafting and housing features, even new gameplay enhancements. Using Creation Club is easy. Browse the selection in-game by category and use credits to download right there. Your new content will appear automatically. Fucking hell. The festum decided to, uh, Decided to do this again. Um, I, I understand wanting to pay modders. I really do. I, I, can, I can get why modders need money. But there's a problem here. And, and the problem is, um, I, most people don't want to pay for mods. Modders can easily get work from their mods after. It's it's funny. This is a mistake, Bethesda. Why the fuck did you do this? Stop it, Diesel! Bad 
girl. The new Colossus looked fucking insane and impressive. It said in a uh, post uh, World War II loss for America where the Nazis took over. Um, I've seen people politically try to attach us online to what's going on with modern politics. That's fucking dumb. Don't do that. But um, it looked great. And it's coming this year, which is also impressive. Evil Within 2. I didn't really like the first game, but god, that trailer was so good. And has me excited in ways that probably should be suspicious. Who knows? Skyrim on the Switch. Um, it looks like a fun way to play it. Being able to take it on the go, use your, uh, use your amiibos, all that. Um, we don't know how well the game will run, but... I think it's going to be fun. I think it's going to be fun. Boy, I called both of these games showing up. But, uh, I expected Game of the Year editions, not, uh, not VR. No, I shouldn't have said expected, more like I wanted. But, hey, VR. You up for one last job, Billy? Who's the mark? The black-eyed bastard responsible for all the chaos. We're gonna kill the outsider. If the DLC in Dishonored 2 is as good as the first games, that'll be amazing. Nobody really knows from these trailers because they're just CGI trailers. So I put them in equal. They are equals. Holy shit, Nintendo decided to go for baby's first XCOM. Although, surprisingly, it looks more enjoyable than XCOM 2 does. Not saying much, but still. Um, I'm insanely excited for this. It comes out in August, and uh, I actually pre-ordered it last night. So, normally a good sign when I want to pre-order something after seeing the footage. Boom, 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 boom. Bang, bang, bang. Boom, 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 boom. Behind you! Bang, 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 bang. Gonna need more help! I love the way you walk. And I love the way you talk. And you walk that wall. And you talk that talk. You knock me. Oh, man. The gameplay trailer for this was impressive. Um, there was a lot of politicizing of this game, also. Uh, similar to Wolfenstein. Um, y you know, honestly, it looks exciting. There's still a long time before it's out. It comes out February next year. It's looking strong for Ubisoft. That's a good sign. Please don't pull Primal again. Please. Dear God. Hello, Toolshed. Toolshed is a catchy tier class visionary archetype. And a butt-fucking traitor. Face the truth, Eric. You guys are kind of douchebags. He just called us douchebags in my mind. He did? South Park, the fractured butthole. <laughs> Available October 17th. You use it as a telephone. You use it as a camera. It's your music player, your flashlight, calculator, and GPS navigation device. But now, finally, 
the most high-tech company in the world has unlocked the mobile phone's true potential so that it can do what it was truly meant to do. We are playing cowboys and Indians. Hey, new kid, we need you to come play with us. Put on some cowboy shit and meet us outside. And bring your phone. <laughs> Whoa, we're playing cowboys and Indians, dickhole. Inuits are technically Native Americans. This new kid puts me to shame. Rip these guys a new asshole, new kid. Destroyer! South Park. <laughs> Holy shit. They announced um, a mobile game. Showed more footage of Fractured Butthole. Um, that's a good sign for both of those. Um, and normally I don't, I don't really give a shit about mobile games. Pokemon Go notwithstanding. But the game looks really fun. And I can't wait to play it about four years from now. Oh well, Our Origins looks okay, but I can't say I'm anywhere near excited for it. The, uh, the new drone bird is both kind of funny and a sense that it's like another Ubisoft shooter. That's PG. They are resisting Ice Barrage, linking fire loadout. Against impossible odds, but together we will adapt and overcome. Oh god, another Toys to Life game. And just after uh, Disney dropped Infinity and the others are starting to fall apart. Now, the game looks fun as shit, but good god, that looks really uncomfortable to play. First steep expansion. This is the journey you will take. Enjoy. Well, at least I didn't launch another side game just for winter games. <laughs> well, we're looking to do something interesting in VR, and we've got this division, and you're looking to sort of bring, you know, what sense you have of storytelling within, and put that into the context of VR. You can, for the first time as a player, feel like you are in a movie. Fascinating research that had begun in the late 90s. Essentially, neuroscientists had figured out a way to upload brain data, trauma, emo emo emotions, memories, to the digital space. Now, we've gone and taken the next logical step, and with Ubisoft, we've, we've recreated in virtual reality one such test of this. I'm, uh, I'm slowly starting to get sick of VR of a C3. This could be something neat, but I'm... I'm getting closer to my limit here. Moksha. Just as Yama described it. True freedom lies beyond. Okay, I, uh, I put this into the middle ground because I love the first Beyond Good and Evil so much. However, a prequel is not what any of the fans wanted and the tone of a trailer was really off. It, uh, it should be good, but I have a feeling that Ancel will fail me. 
It's for honor, but just cutting and copying and pasting Black Flag. Oh boy! <laughs>
understand I want what's best for you. Get the booty on home to me. You're welcome to join me. Hey, you got a bite. Don't let up. Alright, so this is uh, going to be a rapid fire list because these pluses have to be over eventually. Uh, the Impatient looks pretty cool, and it's tied to Until Dawn. Fantastic game. Uh, Bravo Team could be pretty fun. It would be really neat as a uh, like 4v4 multiplayer if they ever decide to do online with that. Uh, fishing in Final Fantasy XV looks fun. <laughs> and uh, and Super Hot VR is exactly what people wanted from Super Hot. So that's nice. That's some really nice VR stuff. Uh, worth paying $400 for VR? No. Not yet. Not yet. Death don't have no mercy in this land. Death don't have no mercy. All right, so uh, this is the last of the pluses from Sony. World War, uh, COD World War II, I should say. Looks really, really great. And there's been a whole bunch of footage in the last uh, last couple days since then. It looks fantastic. So this might be the best COD they've done in a while, and it completely gets rid of the creative class system. Never expected that. Did not expect that. Allow me to reacquaint you. Uh, they didn't show much of Destiny 2, but uh, after Rise of Iron, the beta's going to have to do a lot to sell me on another trip around with Traveler. Um, here's hoping. Here's hoping. Destiny 1 had some issues. Taken King was great. Rise of Iron is, um... Is, yeah. It's, yeah. I will handle this. Wow, that was, uh, something that, uh... Fight. <laughs> so, uh, after three of the two PlayStation Portable games and Ascension... God of War 2017 has a lot of work to do to make me want to play it. Uh, it looks better. It looks a lot better than I thought it would end up being. But, um, it, it's got a long, long road. Drop it! Now! Or I'll kill him! Nice and slow. Don't make it. I was wrong about it being Last of Us Half Moral Messages. I'll be fair. It's Horizon Zero Dawn of Zombies.
games like Moss, Star Child, Skyrim VR, they were pretty much just white noise in the long term for me. It just white noise. Now, uh, now Jim Ryan, Jim Ryan here, believes that old games are ancient. And actually, I won't misquote him. Here, here's the quote. When we've dabbled with backwards compatibility, I can say it's one of those features that is much requested, but not actually used much, said Ryan. That, and I was at a Gran Turismo event recently where they had PlayStation 1, 2, 3, and 4 games, and the PlayStation 1 and 2 games, they looked ancient. Like, why would anybody want to play this? Now, if he honestly thought those games looked awful, why the hell does Sony have the balls to charge or make remasters of PlayStation 1 2 games and charge $50? If backwards compatibility isn't used much, why do you want to remaster the games in the first place? Oh yeah, these games are also pretty great. Uh, so great they remastered it on the PlayStation 3 with Ico. Go and buy that, if you have a PlayStation 3. In fact, shit, you can buy a PS3 for 50 bucks. I think. There's a photo of GameStop. Dot com right there. There's also a link to go buy the uh, the Ico and uh, Shadow of Colossus bundle. Go buy that. It's seventeen dollars if you have uh, the Pro Rewards uh, GameStop. Go buy it. I don't. I don't care. Buy that. Also coming to PlayStation Vita. Um, if I knew I could will Vita games into existence. I would have honestly picked something else. I'm sorry. I, uh... I thought God would spare us. But I was wrong. I was horribly, horribly wrong. Holy fuck. Um, Nintendo pulled out something massive by pulling out Metroid Prime. However, we really don't know when it's coming. Um, but we at least have one Metroid coming to the console. As much as I liked Wii U, it didn't really get this. Oh, also, another Metroid 2 remake. 3DS only. Oh, and a squishy new amiibo. That's neat. I'm Tsunekaze Ishihara from the Pokemon Company. Just the other day, we announced that Pokémon Tournament Deluxe is coming to Nintendo Switch. I have one more announcement. Game Freak has begun developing a core RPG Pokémon title on Nintendo Switch. It may not release for more than a year, but we hope you'll look forward to it all the same. In the meantime, let's enjoy this year's E3. So the Pokemon Company announced a new mainline RPG for Switch for the next couple of years. Honestly, this is a smart move for Nintendo since Sun and Moon sold like crack. Here's uh here's something that's as good as Sun and Moon. A, uh, a new version with cross-platform sans PS4 because uh, Jim Fuck Old Games Ryan says Sony has to keep a walled garden. And uh, some Nintendo side stuff for the game here. Um, it's going to be the best way to play it on the go. 
unless you have a laptop that's really, really good. But honestly, being able to play Rocket League on the go anywhere you want sounds fantastic. I'm awful at the game, but it sounds fantastic. I'm in. Let's go to Elysium. I'll take you there myself. Pyra! Here! Cover me! Got it! Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, finally getting a sort of date. Uh, it's coming this holiday, and will probably ring out the year for Nintendo, considering there's Odyssey. There's Odyssey coming soon. Alright, so Breath of the Wild, you know, DLC for best game this year so far. Story DLC is looking really good. It comes later in the year. Uh, there's some new amiibo. That looks fun. Alright, so Super Mario Odyssey hitting a date. It, between that and Rabbids this year, it's a good year for Mario. Rabbids looks fun. This looks insane. I, I've already pre-ordered it on Amazon, thankfully. So I'm excited. And then I have a final roundup here for Nintendo. This is the stuff I don't really care too much about. Uh, we got a new Yoshi game coming soon. We got a new Kirby game. And we got uh, Fire Emblem Warriors. People still like Fire Emblem, I guess. If you do, nothing wrong with that. I don't. Alright, so uh, this is the Inslate. This is the... Um... This is the weakest E3 so far in a while. Um, everybody likes to say, oh, 2013 was the biggest and the best and not. Um, it, it's, it's a shame. There was a lot of 
A lot of expected things that didn't show up, a lot of things that weren't expected but showed up, and a surprising lack of Hideo Kojima. Actually, not surprising, because after I had recorded it in half edit of a video, apparently he wasn't going. So, <laughs> that, uh, that, that showing of um, Death Stranding at E3 that I'd really hoped for, that was a bad prediction, but it wasn't a bad prediction at the time I made it, so... Um, um, so yeah, comment, like, subscribe on this video, have a good night, Fuzu out.